In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Sigma Excel to create individuals charts. So for this example, I'm going to use the customer data workbook, and it's available in Sigma Excel's installation directory. Now, once you have the sample workbook open, select the Sigma Excel tab, click on control charts, and select individuals. Make sure all of the data is selected and click next. Now for your numeric data variable Y, select overall satisfaction, make sure calculate limits is selected, and click on OK. And you'll see that the resulting individuals chart is produced. Now we have seen this data earlier as a run chart. Uh, the control chart adds calculated control limits. And note that the upper control limit exceeds the survey upper limit of 5. So here it would be a good idea to change the upper control limit to 5. So select Recall Sigma Excel dialog, and this time manually enter an upper control limit of 5. Leave everything else the same, and click OK. And you'll see that the individual's chart is reproduced with the modified upper control limit. Now just as a tip, you should not have to change the calculated control limits unless you have a legitimate reason, such as a boundary condition. Now be sure not to replace the control limits with specification limits, as the control chart will lose its statistical ability to detect assignable causes. We will redo the individual's chart for overall satisfaction later, using the individual's non-normal tool. Now what I'd like you to do is open the delivery times dataset. This dataset contains room service delivery time deviations in minutes. The critical customer requirement is target time of plus or minus 10 minutes. Once you have the data set open, once again select Control Charts, click on Individuals, and select Next. So this time, as our numeric data variable Y, we are selecting Delivery Time Deviation. Uh, click on Calculate Control Limits. Select Test for Special Causes. Select Sigma Zone Lines. And select Advanced Options we are going to enter a lower specification limit of minus 10, a target of 0, and an upper specification limit of 10, and click on OK. Now you'll see that the resulting chart is shown. Now some of the tests for special causes are indicated on the chart. If more than one test fails, the number corresponds to the first failed test. Now there are no points that exceed the plus or minus 3 sigma limits on this chart, but we see that some indication of instability with test for special causes, which is displayed below the chart. The test for special causes report below the chart provides detailed information about each observation identified as a special cause. Note that the control chart also shows the plus or minus 1 sigma and plus or minus 2 sigma lines to aid in viewing these tests. These tests for special causes can have default set to apply any or all of tests 1 through 8. Test 2 can be set to 7, 8, or 9 points in a row on the same side of the control limit. Test 3 can be set to 6 or 7 points in a row, all increasing or decreasing. And test 7 can be set to 14 or 15 points in a row within one standard deviation from the control limit. So click Sheet 1 of your data set. Click on the Sigma Excel tab select control charts, and select test for special causes defaults, which is the last option. And here you can actually change the defaults uh, for the way that these uh, tests for special causes are run. And note that these defaults will apply to individuals and XBAR charts. Tests 1 to 4 settings will be applied to attribute charts. Now click on the tab that says display options for tests. And if you prefer to create a separate worksheet for each test for special causes report, you can choose the Create New Sheet option. The default is to display the test for special causes on the same sheet as the control chart. Note that this report will be overwritten when you add or recalculate your control limits. And when you've chosen the defaults that you think are best, you can click on Save. Now if you click on the Indiv Proc Cap tab here, You'll see that you can view the process capability report, which includes potential or short-term capability indices, uh, CP and CPK. Now, while this report demonstrated some slight instability on the control charts, the bigger issue was being late six minutes on average and having a standard deviation of 7.2 minutes. One improvement implemented was rescheduling the service elevators so that the room service and maintenance were both not trying to use them during peak times. 
Now, if you click on the individual sheet again, with 725 data points, you may want to have a closer look at the most recent data. To do this, you can click on the button here that says show last 30 data points. And you'll see the resulting chart is produced. And in order to reset the chart to the way it was, you can click on show all data points. Now to enable scrolling, you can click on the button uh, right here that says enable scrolling. You would select yes and OK. And you can see at the bottom, you're given a scroll bar so you can more closely analyze each and every point on your control chart. Also, a scroll dialog appears allowing you to specify the start subgroup and window width.